Welcome to Looptopia, where we're building our own utopian homestead. One thing about moving on the raw land is we're basically like living in tents. See the tents? And uh, water becomes an issue real fast. And hauling it is basic dog squeeze. It is ridiculous amount of energy wasted to go get water and bring it here when it's raining all the time. So we want to make a rain catchment. And this isn't like a new idea. I'll show you how we did ours. Maybe it's a little more unique, but um, we needed one for more long-term storage. Like there are, you know, if you're just going out, our friend from uh, Pop-Up Homestead, Brenda, showed me this idea. And I was like, oh, I'd actually never known someone to actually use one. It's because I'm in the middle of digging a well and I just haven't hit water yet. And we need water now. So I stopped what I was doing, shifted gears, and we're building this. And, you know, you could get just some T-post and a tarp and angle it right with like a brick in front and you'd have a pretty decent catch. But we wanted one to run when we're here and not here and we're going to eventually expand it into a large size deal. So I'm going to take you through our system here. I had to forgive the mess. I didn't have time to clean up because a storm's coming and we need to get this thing online. So what I had to do was we wanted to take advantage of this extra tent so we tied it into the tent and let me show you how we did that so we bungeed it up and over so it it creates like a lip and catches it and we try to bungee it tight although there will probably be some adjusting and depending on the how powerful the storm is this should work the downside to this is if we got it wrong it might ruin our tent but we have the ABC tents with the really, really thick poles. And I believe they can hold a lot of weight. I don't know if I would do this with a chintzy tent. So in order to take advantage of this, I needed really long poles. And money's getting real tight now. So we're starting to use our own resources. And the only thing I really had available at the time was loblolly pine, which is not ideal to build with. So what I did is I burned it. And we took it to a burning area over here. I made like a little sand pit and we torched all these things, every one of them. And it takes a long time because you have to strip the bark off as well. So this is incredibly labor intensive, but it's one of those things. If you got more time than money, this is, this is how it's done. So we're making a rain catchment system, but I needed large posts and wood is insanely expensive and I got wood everywhere. The only problem is I got pine. Um, pine's not the best, you know, I would much rather be making this with cedar or maple or something, but I don't have that choice. So we got pine is what I got. What I'm going to do is actually use this wood and cut, uh, I think I need about 12 foot poles. So you'll see what I'm going to do with them in a little later, but I'm cutting them at around 12 feet. And I'm going to show you first, because they're pine, they will rot. So I'm going to have to debark them and burn them. They call it a creatization. I'm going to creatize them so that will keep the termites and stuff from eating them. So I'm going to show you this whole process, how it works. So there's different tools to strip bark. Some people just use shovels. And the best time to do it is when you immediately cut the tree down. It comes off really easy. These were not done because we had stuff to do. And so now it's hard to get it off. They have a chainsaw attachment where you can just drill this up um, but right now we're trying to save power and I only have a few logs to do so I'm going old school and using a scraper now people will also use shovels if they're new enough but if your barks really hard on there this floor scraper works really good so you just got to kind of take it at you dig in and then you skim so it's and then So, I mean, you can go pretty fast if, uh, if you muscle it. This is the saw buck I built. There was an extended saw buck. And you can look back in some of the old stories I did if you want to see how to build this. But we built this for under 50 bucks. And you can see why I made it extended. So I can work on large wood without breaking my back. This isn't on the ground. We have lots of posts to make for the fence. And I just figured this would be much better. As you're getting older, you know, us homesteaders that are old, 
are looking for ways to not injure yourself and I can't recommend this saw buck enough. It is really nice to be able to stand up and debark. So this is the propane torch I'm using to do this. It's pretty good, but like I said, this is because the wood's still kind of fresh, it's a slow burn. Uh, I'll put the affiliate link below. All right, so I got the torch on and to get it up to speed, it has a uh, little like valve that you can turn the gas up and then it has a handle. So if you just do the valve, you're just kind of doing a little bit. But... So it goes fairly fast. I mean, that's all the ends charred there. I'll, depending on what you're doing, you can just char what's going in the ground and paint the rest of the post. But if this goes fast enough, I'll probably just char everything. And remember to wear gloves because everything is sticky and you get the creosote uh, build up everywhere. Try not to breathe in the smoke either from the creosote. Thank you very much. So I got one side done and this took about a half hour and I put them next to each other uh, so that when you heat them up, if the spill off from the flame goes to the other logs, that helped a lot. They're still not 100% done. Uh, I'd like to get them to that kind of char where there's no light spots, like here's some light spots, but those spots are tough to get out sometimes. I think I'm just going to have to settle with good enough. Like some of them, the older stuff goes completely charcoaly, but the newer stuff, it's hard to get that out. Um, one other thing is notice this is on a big sand pile and i even had a little oopsie over here where there was a fire i had to throw dirt on and lorelei came and rescued me with water uh so even being careful it still caught fire to so some of the dead grass around us and i felt i was like oopsie kind of like uh, crystal and squid billies my little oopsies yeah so that could have got out of hand really fast and i'm glad we had we had a big pile of sand we had water and uh, a lot of hustle so that saved it. So this whole process took like an hour. It took a while to really scorch it. And depending on who you talk to, some people say to actually like burn it. And then some people say, well, it's good enough if you can just kind of burn the sap off. And remember, you're trying to make creosote, which is kind of like burned sap. And you can think of it as in if you've ever made candy, my mom used to make candy and if you went over at all it would burn and when that candy burned it tasted awful and you had to throw the whole batch out it's kind of like that with bugs we're burning the sap and making it taste awful it also creates a sort of waterproof barrier and these things will last forever like in japan they actually build entire houses doing this and they are still up so they can last a long time. It's a cheap way to do it without having to varnish and seal everything. The other thing is if you don't have a blowtorch, the old way to do it was to simply burn half of it in a fire for a little bit, make a big bonfire, push half the log in, take it out, make sure it doesn't really, really burn up, and then turn around and put the other half in. And that would probably be a smarter way to do it if I had a whole bunch of logs. So here's the setup we're doing. I've got a 20 by 10 pop-up tent and I'm actually putting the tarp underneath the lip so we can get all this extra surface area of runoff. Now we have a heavy duty tent. And what I mean by that is this is an ABC tent and this is a Walmart tent. You can see the leg, Walmart. ABC is almost twice as thick and it's a hexagon. So it can take a lot of weight I wouldn't do this with a normal tent probably if you're not sure maybe put some posts on the inside but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put these poles and we are going to make a rain catch and get a little bonus of using the tent too so right there i've dug a hole that's about almost four feet it's getting close i used the auger to start it and then finished it off with this the well digger and this is the post i'll be using now the post is a little over 10 feet so it should be big enough i think uh and we're going to show you how to hook it up so you can adjust it and make 
it do whatever you want to do. As far as putting it in straight and leveling it, yeah, you need to do some of that in case you want to use it for other things later. But remember, this is a rain catchment system, so I'm not building something where it has to be perfectly level. All right, so I set the first post, and what you do is you put about six inches of gravel down. If you're using cement, pour a little cement first, I, I think. No, there's debate on if you want it on the bottom, but I, I prefer to seal the bottom. Put about six inches, six inches of gravel, tamp it down. Set your post, and I used a, a post level, but you can also use one of these levels, but with logs it's difficult because it has all these knobs. It's hard to get a good level, so this thing works good. And see so level. So um, what you're looking at is you're gonna pound. I use gravel because it's here and it's free. So I use that with a spud bar. And you put a couple shovelfuls, pound. Put a couple shovelfuls, pound. And you just keep doing that all the way up. So we got the first one up here. And I'll show you the rest of the setup in a little while. But this is um, a 12 foot pole about a third of it's in the ground so maybe eight or nine feet are sticking up we drilled holes through it and used ropes and Lorelei came up with this idea so we could adjust the tension and fine-tune this thing to get this pharaoh and valley to work right because if you don't get it just perfect it'll pull up and then you got a giant pool and it will break and probably take the tent down and everything with it now since this didn't have to be pretty I didn't have that many long poles and this one was really bent but I'm not building a house here so I figured it's okay and we have a cross beam I need to put one more cross beam here but for right now we're just using a rope cross supports and what I did is we used gravel so I dug it into the ground and you can get an idea here of how many we had to do now we did three on the side that, and we put the heaviest one at the front, the thickest post. And then we did kind of a chintzy one in the back because this is all we had available that was this high. Um, I would have liked to make this stronger, but it'll work because there's just not a lot of weight back here. But it keeps it angled well. So let's take you over to the rain catchment. Now originally we wanted to use one of these totes. And I probably will work it into the system. But uh, they're a little harder to work with than barrels, in a way, and this one is really dirty and I just haven't, we have to catch water to clean it, which is, everything's a process when you don't have water. The barrels we chose were pickle barrels. They're actually really thick. Um, and I guess after they have so many runs at the pickle factory, they have to get rid of them. They're in good shape, and they were only 15 bucks. So this was a steal. And what we had to do, was drill bung holes in here and connect these two and they sell these kits now you can piece it and part it together yourself but you're gonna pay the same pretty much so just buy the kit it's way easier I'll, I'll put the affiliate link below but you'll hook these two up and the downside is when you connect these things you have to have someone small enough to get through the top of the barrel because someone has to push it the pipe through and then everything else can be done on the outside and I, I had to make Lorelei get in there and screw them out, and it was quite an ordeal. If you have like a thin little kid, it would have been ideal. Something like that, someone can crawl in the barrel, if you have these tapered barrels. If you're just using like steel barrels, you won't have that issue. Um, so I put a bunghole up front, and this one, uh, you wanna go with the largest size you can pretty much get. This is like a 3 4 opening. A lot of the rain stuff they sell uh, they say they're for rain, but then they're not very big openings and it takes forever for the water to come out. So you can do that. I also put a splitter just so we can get more, uh, we can split it out to the garden and into the house. So let me show you how the filtration works. So this is a double filtration system. I've got a metal screen that is flush and then I have this little bag that ties on. And you can really use anything, you know, if you want to put pantyhose or something, save a little money. But I, at the time, had a little money and I bought it. I think it was only a couple bucks. But I put the affiliate links for these two. Um, it seems to be working pretty good so far, but we have not had a heavy rain yet. And I'm going to film this because it's supposed to storm. So let's see if it's going to storm here soon. 
One last thing is I don't have an overflow hole yet. So what an overflow would be like to tap into the top and run a hose somewhere so you can get it to go where you want it to go in the garden. What I did instead right now is I burned this. I, I built a little system so when this completely overfills it runs down the bucket it'll hit this wall and I'll redirect it into the garden. So we're just gonna basically use gravel gutters to kind of like a above ground French drain to move this until I can get a better system set up. Also I just want to point out you know uh, to put under these I wanted to we could have used the milk crates but I like the milk crates for storage I don't want to waste them and pallets probably would have worked good but I didn't have a way to get pallets here because they don't fit in this car so I used what we had and these are pine logs that I chainsawed and burned and the back side is actually cedar so I didn't have much cedar but I had tiny ones so I can use you, you can leave the bark on with cedar and you really don't even need to burn it but I did but the pine you got to burn all the way down char that thing so a lot of people are probably wondering well why didn't you just go with the giant totes or you can spend eight hundred to a thousand dollars and get one giant catchment tank which is true and probably be a lot simpler but this is what we had available this whole setup was under a hundred bucks and the other thing is I put shutoff valves on every single barrel so what will happen is if there is a leak in any part of this system because there's a lot of fixtures in here if there's leaks i can isolate one barrel and dump it if there's a leak in your 1200 gallon system you have to dump all 1200 gallons to get in and fix the leak sometimes and you lose all your water so we think this is a safer solution it's a lot more work as far as fixtures go but i think it's a smarter way to go because you're really the worst case scenario i'm only gonna lose 50 gallons of water so we also have these barrels for future uh and right now during the storms i'm leaving the tops open so we can catch they're still full of pickle juice they come dirty so we have to clean them pickles and there's our garden starting to come along so one bonus thing is uh this is a harbor freight tarp we got the heavy duty but you do need to reinforce the rivets on front uh, with some duct tape. They start to tear if you do it the way we did it. And a lot of people just hang a rock. But we actually did a dog tie down. So we got a, one of those, you know, dog screw things. And we hooked it. But you'll see that we taped it because it that's so much of that pressure is starting to rip here. And we got to preserve it. Most likely, I think I'm going to use these other grommets and tie it into this just to take a little pressure off. But you'll notice quickly too, when you don't have much space, uh, <laughs> this becomes a living space real quick. It's all cluttered up with stuff already. So here's a wide shot of it. This tarp is 17, no, excuse me, 19 by Eleven at Harbor Freight. I think it was thirty bucks, thirty-five bucks, something like that. And then there's an ABC tent that's twenty by twenty. So it's a pretty good amount of surface area here. You just get a better view, in case. So even with the tarp added up, maybe we're a little over a hundred bucks for the uh, the whole system. One other thing I forgot to mention was that economically, you know, for a few hundred bucks, uh, you can build this system out way cheaper than you can a will. The water is a lot higher quality than anything that comes out of the ground and it's actually been shown that it makes gardens grow better there's a lot of research that says rainwater now is rainwater clean no you probably still want to filter it to drink it but it's way cleaner than all the crud that's going in the ground these days also one huge bonus is you can repair this pretty cheap like we can lose this whole tarp and it's 40 bucks so it's way cheaper than blowing a well pump you know, we're going to put a couple hundred bucks in and it is um, tax free. I mean, you're not getting any bills for this and municipal bills and none of that junk. You're completely off grid. Lorelei wanted me to remind you one other thing. And the most important thing 
you're not dependent on the city especially with uh, the way things are going with rolling power outages coming and you know the power runs the water to your house you can set one of these up in your backyard with a tarp and a little less you know elaborate but it'd be a nice backup and you don't have to depend on a city to give you water so one other thing is you know even if you don't have that much land you could do a simple system in the backyard with a tarp and a few sticks and a bucket but you could use totes to catch water you can use trash cans it, you know in a real situation where you need it and even in an apartment you can go to your balcony or your windows run a tarp out on some poles and have a five gallon bucket come in and just set it up for the storms just stick it outside and it'll work at least you'll have some clean water to wash with and just do some basics this is a little garden update before it rains here uh the walla walla onions made it through we had one annoying night where it dropped to 32 of course uh, i got a little weeding to do but the potatoes actually in the ground none of them got hurt they're doing good so we're doing all right they're starting to pop up you can see little rows of them go with the volcano method but you can see some of the potatoes that went up and got big got a little burnt but i think they're gonna recover but the ones under the straw that are small no problems i think if it had been a few more degrees lower we would have been in trouble like these ones on the ends here got burned pretty good which kind of stinks our russets so the russets seem to be damaged a lot more than anything else the reds just got really big and they got a little damage too so i assume that's going to take a week or two off our season our grape survived oh, a little grape. that's it so things are starting to pop a little bit so it's barely raining and it's slowly catching like the drizzle so i think the concept's working but i guess if it rained like this all day you might get a few gallons just little drips and then when the wind blows it actually dumps more water so, so the wind's actually working in tandem here so it does whip around in the wind but it kind of helps because it picks anything up in the back that's stagnant and moves it forward i'm hoping that it can take this kind of abuse for a long time we supposedly bought a high quality tarp we'll find out this one is incredibly stressed where we have it pinned down but i put duct tape all over this thing to help and we put a few more bungees here i'll get heavier duty ones soon but you can see the hooks actually taped in so it's spreading the stress. All right, so it's starting to rain now. We had to massively adjust this and I had to kind of do a ghetto setup. Um, I'm gonna have to lower these barrels because the tent's just too low and we can't go up any higher, but it is working. It was pooling really bad right here. And we had to put the strap way further back so it didn't touch the barrel. All right, so we got a good flow going now. I need to uh, pick the screen up and I forgot to do it. So don't judge me. And we probably got to move this barrel forward another two or three inches, but that's going to be another day. So we're back down to the uh, light flow rain, but hey, you know, this keeps up for 12 hours. All this will fill up. I would suggest maybe if you have a hook like this, uh, building like a tape dam, putting a little piece of tape uh, back a little bit so the water doesn't run down the strap, like it's catching it and running down the strap and we're wasting water. So if it were dry, I would just put some duct tape and make like a little dam. So I hope you learned a little about rain catchment systems. They're all different. There's a lot of good videos. Check out uh, Brenda at Pop-Up Homestead. She, uh, she made a down and dirty quick one. If that's more your style, uh, she's got a great channel. Go check her out. The other thing I want to mention is we are trying to build a community down here, a homesteading community. And if you're in a plant-based, which basically we have like a, a vegan spiritual community that we're trying to bring together down here. If that's your vibe, hit us in our Telegram group. There's a link in the description below. 
and you can come and talk to us see if we're a good fit other than that just remember that we have unlisted videos over at odyssey and brighton and bitchute those platforms let us actually speak there because youtube is awful and censors every single thing we talk about we have a lot of videos that are not on youtube over there you can find all that those links in the description too so take care of each other we love you hang in there